Hello everyone, welcome to the course of Structometrology. My name is Oscar Jaime Restrepo. I'm professor at the School of Mines at Universidad Nacional de Colombia in Medellin. And this is the uh, lesson number four. And now we are going, today we are going to discuss about thermodynamical aspects in Structometrology. Uh, thermodynamic uh, topics are the base, are the fundamentals of the, all the reactions in structural metallurgy. That's why it's very important to establish the first uh, of the principles uh, of the world. And today we are going to review some special topics about the thermodynamic topic aspects. Uh, we are, today we are going to present a general introduction, definition of the concepts, mainly uh, the concept of energy. Then we are going to present the first law of thermodynamics, some cases of application of the first law, uh, a general view about the second law of thermodynamics, thermodynamics uh, and some presentations, some um, uh, conditions, or some special case. Uh, one of them is the cut knot cycle. Then um, my idea is to present some auxiliary functions and the Maxwell equations, and present the gibbs helmholtz equation and the clausius clapeyron equation. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Some thermodynamical topics, uh, as a, a general view of the concepts. Uh, first of all, we are going to uh, discuss about the systems. What is a system? A system is a portion, uh, a part of the universe, uh, a part of the universe we are going to study. This is the system. And surroundings are, uh, the system are separated from the surrounding because the, uh, for the boundaries. The boundaries are the separation between the system and the surroundings. It's important to define that surroundings interact with the system, okay? We have the possibility to, to present uh, the different can, kinds of uh, systems, open systems, when matter and energy interact. In the, we, the system interchange matter or, or energy uh, with the surroundings. Uh, the second kind of uh, systems are the closed systems. The closed system are, uh, is possible to interchange energy but no matter with the surroundings okay exist uh, a third kind is the isolated system it's isolated isolated system interchange it's, it's impossible to interchange matter or energy with the surroundings okay and finally we have the uh, adiabatic uh, systems adiabatic systems is a system that don't interchange heat with the surroundings we are going to discuss what is heat, okay? We can uh, define a system in the equilibrium because of the properties. Properties are the characteristics of the system. And it's important to say that exist uh, extensive uh, properties are on and intensive uh, properties. Uh, extensive properties depends on the size of the systems. Okay, it's important to uh, difference uh, in uh, extensive and intensive. Intensive uh, uh, properties don't depend on uh, the size of the system. Okay? But it's possible to uh, transform uh, extensive ca characteristic, uh, extensive property to an intensive. If you divide for the mass of the system, uh, in extensive property could change in an inter in intensive properties and the name is a specific uh, property uh, a specific property is a property extensive divided for the max and you obtain a new property is an intensive property and the name is a, 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 a property a intensive a specific property and also uh, you divide you could divide the, the property by the number of moles and it's a new property, it's a property name, uh, it's an intensive property and the name is a spe molar specific property, okay? The properties define the system. 
you can establish or make a measure of the property in one uh, equilibrium and uh, when you transform the property you make a process and go to the another equilibrium the change of equilibrium is a process in a, in a, when you define the properties of the system you define the equilibrium of the system when you change the property you change the state of equilibrium and you make a process a process change the equilibrium from equilibrium in one state to another state okay it's important to define the conditions of the equilibrium okay the equilibrium ex exists different kinds of equilibrium you can define a, a stable equilibrium when you change a property and the system don't react immediately and you could define a, a non-stable equilibrium in a stable equilibrium when you change a property in a small quantity and immediately the state of the equilibrium of the system change and another kind of equilibrium is metastable equilibrium a metastable equilibrium is when you have a, a state you change a property the property could change the equilibrium and make a processes but the the system don't change it's important to, to say that okay it's, uh, when you define a property extensive or intensive property you define you you could measure in the, the the property as we said the other say is you change the property and you make a process when you make a process the property change and you could define the property in the state one and the property on the state two it means that you calculate the the delta of the properties the, the delta change the properties depend on the final state and the uh, initial state okay it's, it's necessary to uh, define that but only if you are going to to calculate a property a property any property you want you make the measure of the um, conditions of the property in the state one and make the measure of the property in the state two the the, the difference in, in the measure of the property in two states is the change is the delta it's important to define that, but only in the equilibrium. And exists a special kind of processing of process is the cyclical process. The cyclical process is, uh, is that process that occurs in a system uh, when the final state is the same or the initial state. Okay. It means that the calculation of the property is the change of the property is zero because it's a property you are going to calculate the the value of the property in the final state and calculate the property in the initial state the difference is delta but in a cyclical process the change of the property is zero only if you are calculating a property okay and the other topic is the energy what it means what means about energy? What it means? It's important to define that. To, to define that, energy is a term that we calculate a lot. Uh, you, you, we, we, we talk a lot about energy, but what it means? Uh, in which in which thing do you think when you say energy? Energy is uh, a very typical uh, term, but it's necessary to think about that. Mm -hmm. Here we are going to say energy is a special kind of concept that is staying the same after a process. Don't change. It conserva. It's conservative. Mm -hmm. You could say uh, in mechanical, in mechanical, you could say uh, energy is the capacity to make a work. Yes, it's okay, but only in in, in mechanical. Energy is more why concept the concept means is conservative after any process this is means for, for now it's okay to say that energy is a concept that don't change after a process it means 
when you change the equilibrium of the system, the energy stay the same. Okay, the total energy stay the same. This is the, the postulate of the first law of thermodynamics. And now we are going to present that. First of all, from the physics, we know that the, uh, the force could define like the change of the energy because of the displacement, the movement, okay? The negative, the negative transformation of the negative change from the energy in terms of the uh, space, in terms of the movement. It's important to say that. This is the, the this is the the final definition, definition of the of the of the force. Let me use that. Force could define as the change of the energy in terms of movement, displacement. Okay, this is the um, condition. We are going to define internal energy. Internal energy is a property that depends on the quantity of mass uh, that a system that, that a system have, a system has. In that sense, you could make the measure of the ener internal energy in the in one state and the internal energy in the final state. You could change, you could measure the difference, the delta, the delta U. Delta U is the change of internal energy of a system. And you could measure in the final state and the initial state because of internal energy is a property. Internal energy depends on the quantity of the mass of the system. It's a property that depends on the internal mass. It means that internal energy is a property, extensive property. Extensive property, and you could change the extensive property in an intensive property, dividing for the mass. The name is internal energy specific. Or you could uh, change the extensive property in an intensive property, dividing the internal energy, divided by the number of moles. It means that it's a new property, it's an intensive property in, na in the name is uh, internal energy is molar specific. This is the name, okay? For, for the deduction of the first law of the thermodynamic, uh, we use the definition of the Joule experiments, the Joule experiment. The Joule experiment established that the quantity of heat is equivalent to the quantity of work. Energy, uh, heat and work are kinds of energy. Energy that depends only of the uh, process, not of the equilibrium. In the equilibrium doesn't exist heat, or in the equilibrium doesn't exist work. But during the process, when the internal change and in internal energy change appears, a trans transference of energy. One of them is heat and the other is work. When you use that definition of the Joule, Joule, uh, Joule experiment, you could demonstrate that all the transformation of the ener internal energy is equivalent to the transformation of the heat and work. What it means? It means that in a system, the total energy change and is compensated by the appear of two kinds of tra energy transference, heat and work. This is the definition of the first law of the thermodynamics. What it means? The energy is stable. The, ener the total energy don't change. The energy is conservative. Total energy is conservative. Could change the internal energy, but it's transformed in, it's transformed in two kinds of energy, heat and work. Heat and work are two kinds of different energies. Energy that don't depend on the state of equilibrium. It depends only on the process. Take care of this. 
in the equilibrium doesn't exist heat. In the equilibrium doesn't exist work. Only in the process. It means that when you change the internal energy because of you change the property, you change the conditions of the equilibrium goes to from equilibrium of the state one to the equilibrium in the state two, the internal energy change. And in that change, in that process, in that process, when you change the equilibrium, there appears two kinds of transference, heat and work. Okay. What it means work? Look at this. This is the equivalent internal energy. We said that internal energy is a special kind of energy, is a property, but work is not an energy, it's not a property because work don't, doesn't exist in the equilibrium. War exists only during the process. War is an energy transfer, 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 transfer of energy uh, because of the boundaries of the system change. It's a transference of energy because of the movement of the boundaries of the system. The boundaries of the system change. In that sense, appears a energy transference named work. Work is not established in the equilibrium. In the equilibrium doesn't exist work. Work exists only during the process. During the process. Okay? That's why it means the integral of work is the total work from the state one to state two. You, you can say war in the state one or war in the state two. No, war during the transformation from the state one to state two. Okay. And the other kind of transfer energy transference is heat. Heat is not a property. Heat is a transformation, it's a transfer energy transference that appears when the temperature of the system is different of the temperature of the boundaries, okay? When exists that kind of difference appears a heat transfer, a tra a energy transfer, energy transference named heat. It's a flow of energy due to the difference of temperatures between the system and the boundaries across the borders, okay? Again, Heat is not a property. Heat is a energy transference. And you could define heat in the state one or heat in the state two. No, only during the process. That's why in that sense, you could say that integration of the, of the heat transference is the total transference of heat from the state one to state two. Okay, it's very important to say that. In that sense, you could say again, here, the first law of the thermodynamics says, the change of internal energy, when the internal energy change is because of appears two kinds of transference, heat and work, and they are equivalent, okay? How is the mechanism of the uh, energy transference uh, or heat transference? exists at least three different mechanisms, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is the flow of energy because of exists contact between the particles. Convection is a transference of heat uh, using a, a, a special kind of fluid, mm, heat, a, air or a, liquids. And radiation is a transference of heat because of electromagnetic uh, transference. Okay, the first law of the thermodynamics says that the energy of the of a system is conserved. The system can transfer the energy, change the energy in the equilibrium, but during the process appears two kinds of energies, heat and work and it means that it, it possibly the possibility that the internal energy change but the internal energy is a property heat and work are not properties 
it's important to define a special kind of uh, convention things uh, uh, to define uh, work and uh, heat in a system when you receive heat the process name is endothermic uh, and the, we said that is positive the, this this energy is positive when a system uh, spells uh, heat we, we said that the the process is, is named exothermic and this heat is negative this energy is negative okay in talking about the work we we could say that a system receives work or gives work when the process when the system receives work receive energy because of the boundaries of the system moves into, himself, into itself, the system receives work and this energy is negative. And when the system do, when the system does work, uh, the, volume, the volume of the system is bigger and in that sense, this transference is positive. This work is positive. It's a convention of the things, but it's, it's a definition, okay? Okay, we could apply the first law of the thermodynamics in different conditions, in different cases. Exists are different cases when you could use uh, the first, uh, the first uh, system, the first uh, law of the thermodynamics. For instance, you could apply in a, in a process without change of volume, in a process without change of temperature, in a process without change of pressure, or in our process without um, transference of heat. The first case, when the system don't change the volume, we say that we have an isochoric process we are, or isovolumetric is the same. When you don't change the temperature, you say it's an isothermical process. When you don't change the pressure, you say we ha you have an isobaric process and uh, when do you don't mm, permit the interchange of heat the process is named adiabatic okay okay about the the work we change we could change the this definition the, the quantity of work that is uh, that a system interchange is work from uh, equilibrium one and two uh, is the same War is the force multiply or the distance change of the position okay but force is defined by pressure plus area and in that sense pressure uh, that multiplies area and displacement of movement is volume okay and in that sense the change of or, or the, the the word that assistant interchange is pressure plus change of volume. And that says there is the integrate or pressure or the derivative of volume. Uh, we could express the first law of the thermodynamics in terms of, in terms of internal energy, transference of heat and transference of work. It's another, another form to present the first law of the thermodynamics. Okay. Exists another uh, special functions. One of them is enthalpy. Enthalpy is a property, a property in, defined by internal energy plus pressure uh, multiplied by volume. It's a definition of the a property. Because why property? Because it's defined in terms of internal energy. It's a property. Pressure is a property and volume is a property. It's an extensive property because the, because of depend of the, the size of the system because it's defined in terms of internal energy. You could change that extensive property in an intensive property if you divide the enthalpy up for, for the max and you could define a, enthal a specific enthalpy and the other, say, the other way is to divide the, the enthalpy because the num number of moles is, uh, the, is a new property, is an, it's an intensive property, and is defined that uh, a specific molar, a molar specific enthalpy. This is the way to, to present. Okay, another, pro another definition is heat capacity. 
heat capacity is a property uh, that is defined in a special system, like the change of the, uh, the, the quantity of heat interchange because of the difference of temperature in the system. This is the definition of heat capacity. It's a property that depends on the size of the system. In that sense, you could divide, divide it by the mass or divide it by the number of moles in order to make it intensive. Okay. Okay, another definition is entropy. Entropy. The entropy is a property, another different property is the defined by the quantity of heat transfer divided by the temperature is a definition. The definition is a property. Uh, and in in uh, for definition, by definition, we could define entropy as a property. If you define property, uh, entropy as a property, you could change the delta entropy. Delta, P, delta entropy means entropy in the state one. Uh, you could define the entropy in the state one and the entropy in the state two. And the delta entropy is the entropy in the state two minus the entropy in the state one. Okay. If you make a, a, a cyclical uh, processing, as entropy is a property, the calculation of the entropy in a cyclical process is zero. Okay. Uh, in the real situation, uh, the exists uh, definition is the Clausen inequality. That the, means that the in, in a cycle, in a cycle, in a cyclical processes, maybe this difference is not zero. Could be less than zero. Okay. Okay. Uh, you uh, you could define uh, in that sense in a um, special kinds of processing. Uh, entropy could define uh, heat divided temperature. In that sense, you could replace heat, heat it means temperature multiplied by change of entropy. If you define in this sense, you could change the first law of the thermodynamics in this sense. Uh, change of uh, internal energy is the difference, is, it could be present by heat minus work. Okay, heat is defined now in terms of temperature, entropy, and or is defined in terms of pressure and volume. In that sense, you could present the first law of the thermodynamics in terms only of properties. It's very important to say that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we have new new definitions. I'm going to present some definitions that could be very important in the metallurgical topics. One of them is uh, the auxiliary functions, the auxiliary functions in order to present the condition of the system. First law of the thermodynamics, entropy, change of entropy, change of entropy, you could divide it in that sense, uh, like uh, capacity, uh, heat capacity, uh, defining, divide, uh, presented only in uh, isobaric processing. And you could define uh, heat capacity in isobaric processes as a function of the temperature, okay? In that sense, you, you could change, you could uh, present the change of entropy, enthalpy, in terms of heat capacity. Uh, when exists a change of the state, maybe it's a phase transformation, you could express the uh, enthalpy in this sense, okay? Okay. Uh, it's the same, the same thing with the entropy. Entropy is defined in terms of uh, heat and temperature. And if you, in an in a isobaric uh, processing, heat is equivalent to uh, enthalpy. In that sense, you could change the uh, transformation of entropy as a function of heat capacity uh, in isobaric processing divided by temperature. And when you have uh, phase transformation, the expression could be in this sense. Okay. Uh, another thing, another form, another ways to present the first law of the thermodynamics in terms of enthalpy 
uh, to define uh, enthalpy in terms of internal energy, pressure and volume, we could present uh, the relations. And this is another way, this uh, question number three, you could say that a change of the enthalpy is the uh, special presentation in terms of temperature, entropy, volume and pressure. A very special, a very special uh, definition is Gibbs free energy is defined like G. G is defined as enthalpy minus temperature and entropy. It's a property because it's defined in terms of properties. And of course, it's an extensive property because it depends on the, on the size of the in, uh, system. In that sense, you could change in an intensive property, as we said in the other situation. It's a property. It means that you could um, make the me measure in the state one and the state two, and you calculate the delta. Okay. But the most important thing is the free uh, Gibbs energy is a criterion of equilibrium. When a system is in equilibrium, the delta of the this property is equal to zero. It's very very important is the condition to define that a system is in equilibrium. When you define that the change of the free uh, Gibbs energy is zero, the system is in equilibrium. It's the thermodynamic permission for a reaction, for, for a reaction proceeds, a reaction could be possible. Another uh, definition is the Helmholtz energy is important in, 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 in energy, but not in metallurgy. Metallurgy we don't use a lot. And here is the most important uh, auxiliary functions that we have in a system. The first law of the thermodynamics in terms of internal energy, enthalpy, free energy of Gibbs, or free energy of Helmholtz. This is the most important for closed systems. If you have open systems, open systems, when you have interchange of mass and energy from system and surroundings is, uh, is presented in this sense. Here is the same expression, but we have another, another uh, definition is the chemical potential of the system multiplied by the um, composition of the system. Okay, uh, and exists uh, some different equations that is important to present. Uh, give Helmholtz equation, uh, make enthalpy balances, enthalpy balances in the reactions. This Helmholtz equation is important to define. I'm going to present that. This is the most uh, the important equation. It's a very important equation in metallurgy. And could be presented also in terms of the Helmholtz. Uh, could be presented in terms of Gibbs or in terms of the Helmholtz. Okay, and this is the other way, the other way to present. And uh, finally, the very important equation in thermodynamics that could be very useful in thermo in, in extractive metallurgy is the Gibbs, uh, is the clausius clapeyron equation presented in that same. The clausius clapeyron equation. It's very, very important. Okay, I think is uh, we are going we, we presented the most important equation in, that could be useful in thermodynamics. Finally, uh, the Gibbs uh, free energy for a multi-component system is a way to present how a, a reaction could change. Delta G of the reaction is the delta G zero plus R RT uh, logarithm of key. Key is the constant of the equation that could be uh, defined by the concentration of the products and the concentration, divide by the concentration of the reactants. Okay, uh, finally, the Van Hoff equation to define another condition of the system. Okay, uh, here we have presented a uh, different conditions, a different um, concept that could be very important in thermodynamics, that could be very important in take into account when we are going to work in extractive metallurgy reactions. Uh, I invite you to continue working in that sense. It's uh, very uh, important to take into account that, that equation and that concepts in order to define how could we work in the in, in structural metallurgy. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I invite you to continue uh, being in touch with us and continue uh, following this course. 
Thank you very much for, for very much for your attention and see you in the next class. Have a good day. Bye bye.